Yes, Mabilani, Vivian has the slides and she'll make sure they're available when we need them. You sent um, to me. Because... Welcome everybody um, to this, our Thursday morning webinars. My name is Tian Johnson. These weekly webinars are brought to you by the Vaccine Advocacy Resource Group, which is 100% funded by advocates, the African Alliance with the support from the SAMRC and the Department of Science and Innovation. The webinars are brought to you in partnership with the Community Constituency COVID-19 Fund, the Treatment Action Campaign, and APA. The structure of the calls take place as follows. For the first 30 minutes, we will have an overview provided to us by our guest. In the last 30 minutes, we will have an open floor of Q&A where you are free to enter your questions or your comments or your thoughts in the chat box. So please feel free as the presentation is ongoing to share some of your thoughts um, there. During the month of October, colleagues, the African Alliance will be relaunching and this includes a website and an online archive. On that archive, you will see all of these webinar recordings that we've had over the last 16 sessions, we've had 16 webinars so far, and you will also see transcripts and Q&A sheets from each of these um, webinars. The model that we've been following is any questions that we cannot get to during the course of the webinars, our guest responds to them and we capture that in writing and that will be available to you. Colleagues, the Community Constituency COVID-19 Front was established as a formal advisory body to facilitate the participation of civil society sectors and networks including those represented in the national response and implementations of community-based measures in response to the novel coronavirus COVID-19. The Community Constituency COVID-19 Front promotes an inclusive, competent and responsive civil society that effectively serves the needs of communities by linking and diversifying civil society actors, expanding the sector's response and ensuring better coordination, thus improving operations and enhancing connections between civil society organizations with government, business, labor, their stakeholders and beneficiaries. Colleagues, today we speak to the co-convener of the Community Constituency COVID-19 Front, Mabilani Mfundisi. Um, he's, of, he's from the South African National AIDS Council Civil Society Forum Coordinating Committee. At the SANAC Civil Society Forum, Mabilani is the national chairperson of the SANAC Sports, Arts and Culture Sector, the co-chairperson of the SANAC Resource Mobilization Committee, as well as the convener of SANAC Civil Society Forum's Health Systems Strengthening Committee. On a daily basis, Mabilani is the executive director of Show Me Your Number HIV Prevention Project. He has over 20 years of experience of leadership and management in the nonprofit sector, where he has served in various roles. We've asked Mabilani to join us today as the first of four weeks that will follow. In these four weeks, we will profile all of our partners, the Front, the Treatment Action Campaign, APA, and the Department of Science and Innovation. We've asked Mabilani to cover a few areas and help us understand how the community constituency COVID-19 front came into being, what drove its establishment and its approach, its work so far and its partnerships, some of the key le lessons learned and where do we go to from here. Having said that, thank you Mabilani Fundisi for making time and joining us this morning. It's always a pleasure to speak to you and I will now hand over to you and welcome. Uh, thank you, uh, Tien and uh, colleagues uh, present here. My balan from this has been introduced. Today is the beginning of uh, October, so we will see the South African uh, Communist Party being very active. Uh, they have the Red October campaign. Uh, that has nothing to do with my membership of the Communist Party because I'm not a member of the Communist Party. That's just uh, bringing that as uh, uh, my introduction. So I'm, I'm going to speak to the brief uh, that has been uh, provided. Um, we have had, uh, you know, lessons uh, learned, great moments, and uh, yeah, uh, it has been a great uh, six months since um, the start of uh, the hard lockdown on the 27th of, uh, of March. And we are still at it, although at a different uh, level. So I'm just waiting for uh, the colleague to get the, uh, the slide uh, uh, ready, uh, this, the slide show, um, so that I, I stick to the brief and not go this way and that way. Uh, yeah, uh, it is getting organized. Uh, you can see on your screen the, the
Okay, um, whilst we, 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 we get uh, ready for the full screen, uh, in terms of uh, the, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm in my phone. Yeah, um, the, the community constituency front, uh, where do we come from? We were propelled into action uh, when the WHO uh, uh, in March um, uh, indicated that uh, you know COVID-19 was a, now I can't see my screen, I see myself. Controller, can I see the screen? I see myself on the screen now. Can Stian, I can the technology allow me to follow Just my? Just give me a second. I'll take it over from here. Sorry, colleagues, just a few technical glitches. Okay, can we go to the next slide? No, 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 the first one. Yeah, so. What propelled us into action was uh, the uh, WHO uh, declaring that uh, COVID is a global uh, pandemic. Glitches, also, you could. Yeah, uh, uh, cabinet also, uh, you know, being alive to the challenges uh, that uh, were confronting us, including that uh, in March, uh, the first uh, COVID cases were reported uh, in South Africa. The National Command Council was uh, uh, established, and uh, on the 23rd of March, the President of the Republic, uh, uh, in a national address, uh, indicated that uh, from the uh, midnight of the 26th, so effectively the 27th of March, um, the country will go into a hard lockdown uh, as part of measures that were put in place to respond to COVID. Um, uh, during that period, a uh, Sanak Civil Society Forum which brings together 18 sectors, had been in uh, discussions around establishing uh, its um, response to uh, COVID-19. And uh, we were watching the televised speech by the president uh, on the uh, 23rd of March, whilst we were in our meeting, to discuss the approach that we will take in responding to uh, COVID-19, where we're discussing our community-based uh, measures. Uh, at the same time, the uh, various uh, civil society uh, formations under the banner of uh, the Network Community uh, Trust also were in discussions in terms of their response to uh, COVID-19. As the saying goes, uh, great minds think alike. Uh, the Sanak Civil Society Forum through its community-based measures as well as the Network Community constituency uh, came together uh, based on the different conversations that were taking place to uh, establish uh, the community constituency uh, uh, front as a broad civil society front linked to NetLet that will then uh, use its collective might to ensure that uh, uh, you know, civil society acts in tandem, supports and uh, uses its power in communities to address uh, issues uh, relating to uh, uh, COVID. And this was the, um, you know, the best uh, 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 or the best of the community constituency uh, uh, front. Um, Tian, I need to go to slide number three now. So the front uh, brought together uh, 11 organizations. At the apex was the Sanak Civil Society Forum and the uh, uh, Network Community a, a, a trust and uh, the community trust uh, brought uh, together organizations that currently participate and operate in the uh, a, a network uh, structure. 
But the uh, 11 organizations was uh, other than Sanak Civil Society Forum, which is 18 sectors, uh, as well as the uh, Network Community Trust, was uh, the South African Youth Council, uh, the WIGO, which uh, organizes in the informal uh, economy, uh, the financial uh, sector uh, you know, uh, campaign, uh, Sanaku, uh, Sanku, uh, DPSA, Disabled People South Africa, uh, as well as uh, Women's National Coalition, the Alliance of NPO Networks, as well as the Patient uh, User Network. It is important to note that uh, the uh, organizations that uh, form part of NetLeg Community Trust uh, was uh, DPSA, Women's National Coalition, uh, Sanku, the Financial Services Sector Coalition Campaign, uh, as well as uh, uh, Sanaku. Uh, but they opened up their platform uh, where Sanak Civil Society Forum, uh, which uh, organizes in the HIV space, as well as the Alliance of MPO Networks, uh, as well as the Patient User Network, and WIGO, which were, uh, you know, are operating outside of the community constituents in Network. We all came together, given the various uh, roles that we play, the membership that we command, the advocacy issues that uh, we, we, we put to, uh, uh, together. Uh, out of those conversations, uh, 14 advocacy issues were I agreed as the issues that civil society will advocate for and ensure that uh, with what we didn't know, but also with what we knew, which was that uh, during periods of uh, uh, pandemics, uh, it is not only expected that government will take the lead, but also other organizations will be part and parcel of the, the response that uh, needs to, to, to happen. So that then brought us together. Uh, uh, can we go to the next slide? So the community constituency uh, front, uh, as indicated, was born, and the two structures were created. Uh, there was the governance of the uh, front that brought together leaders of all the 11 organizations that made up the front, as well as the uh, management of the uh, 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 front, uh, which uh, happened through a net center that uh, was uh, established. Let me go back to my slide. Slide number four. Yeah. So, in terms of the governance, uh, uh, Steve Letike, who is the chairperson of Sanak Civil Society Forum, together with uh, Tulani uh, Chefita, who is the uh, overall convener of the Netlek community constituency, were then the co chairperson of uh, this massive uh, body. Um, and the, the other representative of the governance of the uh, a, a, a collective. The management that was led, uh, which is led uh, by the uh, NEF uh, Center, had two co conveners, uh, Mapala Nimfundi, coming from Sanak Civil Society Forum, and Tlanta Ndog, uh, who is the uh, CEO of the NetLEC uh, Community uh, uh, Trust. We're joined by uh, people who volunteered and were deployed by their various organizations to play different roles in the work of the uh, of the front in terms of the five key uh, pillars that we had defined for the work that uh, needed uh, uh, to be done. Next slide, please. So the NEF Center as the day-to-day -day platform for ensuring that the community-based measure strategy was uh, operationalized, uh, had one uh, key mandate, which was to ensure an operational impact of the NEF centers, both national and provincial uh, NEF centers, uh, which was defined as the contribution towards a unified South African health and social system that integrates community strengthening and can also respond to all citizens uh, in this uh, time of COVID-19. We're all novices, we didn't know what was, uh, uh, what we know now uh, is different from what we knew in March when we started this particular uh, process. It's been a challenge, it's been a journey, interesting, sometimes frustrating, but uh, our motto was that we stepped up and we did the best that we could with what we had. Next slide, please. 
Now, the operationalization of the NEF Center at both uh, national as uh, to, uh, including to neighborhood level, uh, we had a national NEF Center that had about uh, 50 plus uh, people uh, led by the co conveners the management team of the different uh, streams, as well as different colleagues that came from the different uh, organizations that form part of uh, the, uh, the organizations that form the, the networks. Uh, and then there was the provincial NEF centers that brought together these organizations. Some of them were organized at provincial level. Not all organi 11 organizations had presence in the in provinces, and therefore the NEF center uh, in provinces took the shape of what the uh, you know the strength of the organizations were at that level. It was also further divided into district uh, response teams. Uh, uh, so that we could meet our work in terms of the various uh, districts. To an extent, we were able to do this, but uh, 52 districts without resources. I think at this point, it's important for colleagues to know that uh, our budget for the work that we needed, we had uh, projected just over 1 billion rand. The amount of money that we have been able to raise up to now is just less than uh, 300,000. Um, so you can uh, 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 imagine the extent of the expectation and what we were able to do. But uh, we indeed were able to do quite a lot without uh, uh, any of those particular sources. Uh, but at district level, we couldn't just operate there. We also had uh, neighborhood uh, 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 structures that were made up of uh, people that come from the organizations that form part of the uh, 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 front at uh, different levels. And uh, to uh, the best of their ability, Given the resource constraints, given the lockdown conditions, uh, colleagues were able to contribute as best as they could uh, with what they have, uh, where they were. Next slide, please. The operational arrangements uh, that uh, we uh, followed uh, was basically in terms of uh, three levels, leadership, uh, technical, and the uh, IT. Uh, uh, support as well as uh, administration. In terms of uh, leadership, uh, this was primarily the role played by the government's uh, council as well as the management, the co conveners of the NEF Center, uh, as I've already indicated. Uh, each member uh, allocated a district to work with, focusing on the five work streams that I will come to and uh, pushing the 14 advocacy issues that we are advocating. Our role, uh, both at governance and management, was to provide strategic guidance and uh, make decisions on the work that needed to be done. To ensure linkages uh, with national nerve center, provincial, uh, 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 government, municipalities at district level and local levels, and other strategic partners. And our experience around this, some uh, relationships worked and some didn't work because uh, there is always uh, the love and hate relationship between those in the mainstream politics and those that are in civil society. Uh, those who embrace and support uh, working with civil society would work well for them, but others uh, became disabled and uh, that uh, resulted in challenges that we will speak about uh, in a short while. Um, we also were implementing and uh, reporting on the work of the National Nerve Center, fed by what was happening in provinces as well as districts and at the local level. And we also developed and implemented an uh, operations plan in terms of the different uh, web streams. Uh, we will talk about our IT support, which was through a platform uh, called uh, Twitter's Chaba, where it was refined to something that uh, satisfied all of us. Uh, you know, we started from zero to what we currently have, which for us worked, given the resources that uh, we had anticipated to receive and what we received. And at this point, uh, our colleague, uh, Tarun from Marquest uh, Consulting, was very uh, instrumental in ensuring that he uh, uses his IT expertise to ensure that uh, we uh, achieve the things that we wanted uh, to achieve within the limitation of uh, resources. We also had a great administration, which continues through our project management team and the contribution of the various uh, role players uh, 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 contributed. The next slide, please. So this is the heart of what we wanted uh, 
uh, achieve. Uh, just give me a second. Hello all, um, we have seen your work. Hello all, we have seen your notes around um, the background noise. Um, Mabilani is attending to that and will be with us in a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, though, please feel free to put your questions and your comments into the chat box. I think Mabilani has covered a lot of key areas so far in his presentation, specifically around the, the national coverage, some resource mobilization issues, and some of the partnerships. Um, so I think Mabilani is back with us now, um, and I will hand back over to him. Okay, no, uh, thank you, uh, colleagues, sorry about the, the distraction. Uh, Tian, can I get back to the slide? I'm seeing me. So this was at the heart of our strategy. Five uh, uh, key areas that we uh, defined for our work. Uh, one was on advocacy, 14 uh, advocacy areas that we had identified. And those 14 advocacy areas was a baggage that each of the members of the uh, network came with in terms of uh, their contribution to the front, from health, from addressing issues that affected uh, 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 you know, people in the informal economy, uh, health workers, uh, digital uh, access, and uh, quite a number of issues that uh, defined uh, our work. We wanted those particular issues, one, to bring them to the attention of the powers that be, especially through the National uh, Command Council, so that uh, the regulations that uh, were promulgated from time to time. Uh, responded to what we saw as things that needed to be done with what we were addressing. And to the extent that we were able to contribute, we feel that uh, we have done quite a, a substantial amount of work around that. Of course, some of those advocacy issues were supposed to be supported by the resources that we had hoped to mobilize in order for us not just to be bystanders and the uh, people that are asking for things, but also to be providers of the things that we wanted including provision of the food parcels and things like that, that the communities uh, wanted. But uh, as we have indicated, with the budget of uh, 1 billion that we wanted to raise, we only were able to get 300,000. Uh, 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 um, but, uh, you know, we are not uh, 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 distracted by that. We were able to do what we needed to do. Uh, work that we did around the communications and public awareness, and we will speak to that in terms of how we have been able to do that, social mobilization, contact tracing, and the uh, uh, screening, as well as uh, our work around that advocating and addressing uh, issues around human rights. All this were, you know, driven through a fulcrum of leadership through implementation of provincial and the uh, strategic operational plan. Next slide, please. The strategy did not work without us getting uh, administrative, administrative and technical support. Can you go back to the previous slide? Today, they asked having an MNE team that was that part of our project management. We also had the IT, which was responsible for development of the Fusa Sichaba platform. Uh, we also had administration that ensured that we bring everybody together. By the way, all of this was done by organizations that were contributing uh, towards uh, 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 you know, the work that uh, we had been uh, doing. Uh, also, uh, database management, and we were able to create partnership with uh, Microsoft to came to our party to assist us with the other technology uh, uh, tools that enabled us to be able to deploy our IT system uh, in a way that uh, was uh, meaningful and impactful for what we wanted to do. 
there also financial management. Uh, as I said, uh, things have been said about the front that a lot of money was raised, uh, but uh, the record will state that, indicate that uh, the front was only able to raise just over 300,000 and that money was used to support uh, the work that we need to do. Uh, during the hard lockdown, we brought uh, the 50 colleagues together to ensure that no one is put in harm's, harm's way by contracting COVID. So we uh, negotiated an arrangement with the hotel with the hope that the resources that we had hoped to raise, we will be able to get those resources. For others, we believe that uh, the front went to a hotel to have a joyride. We did not have any joyride. We have a bill currently of 3.5 million that uh, we are working on uh, various uh, ways in order to raise money to pay that particular hotel. Others are saying it's money that could have been used to uh, support uh, work that, uh, you know, providing food parcels and others, but some things needed to be done uh, with money. The collective amount of uh, work done by the front, uh, which is unpaid, uh, goes into uh, millions of rents. And uh, we continue to engage with uh, colleagues who provided us with support regarding these particular issues uh, to, you know, bear with us because what we had hoped to achieve in terms of resources did not necessarily materialize in terms of the resources that we were able to uh, raise. But as we said, we stepped up and we did the best we could with what we have where we were. Can we go to the next one? So what value add did uh, we uh, bring uh, to the response? Firstly, uh, you know, we became the voice of communities at NetLag and uh, the National Command uh, Council. We influenced the policy consideration based on our 14 advocacy issues. You know, we uh, take pride in that, that which we needed to do was not just to be counted in terms of the rent and cent, but in terms of the social capital that they were able to contribute quite a number of those uh, 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 pronouncements uh, in terms of the uh, 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 you know, regulations were based on uh, what we were advocating and what we advocated for. We also advocated and ensured that the Department of Health and Department of Social Development, both the ministers are chairing the Ministerial Advisory Committee on Social and Behavior Change. Of the 11 uh, uh, network leaders uh, governance, Seven of them are part and parcel of that multi-sector body, which is comprised of just over uh, 50 uh, individuals that are contributing towards uh, the response uh, in terms of uh, uh, COVID. Um, but we also worked on ensuring that uh, we do scoping of households and uh, our community uh, through our community health agents who use the web platform, Tusas Chaba. Uh, it is there, you can go see what it is that we did and uh, ensure that uh, we identify the needs of uh, communities through household surveys that we were conducting. Over 100,000 people were reached through this particular platform. Of course, uh, what people asked of us through those uh, surveys, uh, most of the things uh, we were not able to do as the front, but uh, we were able to, uh, you know, refer most of those issues to those that could uh, act. There were those that were within our purview uh, that we had hoped to achieve through the resources that uh, we raised, but uh, we were not able to uh, achieve uh, the, uh, the other things that we wanted uh, uh, to achieve given the resource constraints. We were able to implement and sustain community level uh, public education and awareness uh, that reached people in their languages uh, with necessary social sensitivities necessary to navigate uh, South Africa. Uh, we interpreted, interpreted messages, the regulations, we communicated, we engaged uh, through our uh, uh, public awareness and communication stream that our colleague uh, Nelisa was uh, driving and she has done a huge amount of work in terms of that through, also through the various uh, uh, you know, community and uh, private sector partners that uh, we were working with. And we were, all reached, we were able to reach over 5 million South Africans with uh, the various messages that we propagate through uh, different media uh, platforms. Through our social uh, 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 mobilization, uh, we were able to ensure that leaders and influencers are allowed to get out of their houses during the hard lockdown. 
and do the work that we needed to do. To this extent, over 5,000 leaders were able to see the, um, the permits that allowed them to enable us to do the work that we needed to do. We were the only civil society organization that was given that particular uh, responsibility, given our uh, advocacy we put together. And uh, even those that were working against us, when they came to us to ask for access to permits, we understood that uh, we couldn't do what we needed to do on our own. We couldn't uh, monopolize uh, access to provision of permits, and we gave anyone and everyone who wanted to be provided uh, with the permit. So we did the best we could with uh, what we had, where we were. Um, we also ensured monitoring uh, of compliance at community level through using social, uh, I mean, civil society, social capital and networks and uh, platforms uh, that uh, are hard to reach and not easy to understand. So we had within our midst uh, leaders from the traditional leadership, through Contralesa, from the faith sector, uh, through the various civil society sectors, um, traditional health practitioners, and their social capital over and above that of other leaders enabled us to reach areas, people, and platforms that ensure that the message that government was putting out there for all of us to uh, respond to was able to give in uh, prominence. And lastly, we created partnerships with Solidarity Fund where four NKMPOs within the network were given the responsibility to distribute the food parcels. It was not a lot. Uh, the total number of food parcels was just uh, over uh, 10,000 food parcels in four provinces uh, based on the areas that the Solidarity Fund wanted us uh, to distribute those food parcels. At the time, we were told that it is a test, and if that test uh, worked and the Solidarity Fund wanted to uh, do food distribution going forward, they would have made a decision whether they could do that through the platform that we have. All the four organizations did the best that they could. They met the requirements that the Solidarity Fund had put together. There is an impression created that the uh, uh, community constituency front was uh, about the uh, food parcels because our yeah. Jesus Chava platform also wanted to know, you know, the challenges at households, uh, including uh, you know, requirements for food uh, distribution. But as we said, we did not have, uh, you know, a, a storage facilities with food parcels or PPE that we could be uh, providing. That is what we had hoped to achieve, but we're not able to do so. So we were only able to uh, provide, uh, you know, 10,000 uh, food parcels in four provinces that were provided by the Solidarity Fund. We didn't use any cent, it was money and the product that Solidarity Fund had put together. Currently, we're working with Solidarity Fund where about 700 agents are going to be uh, engaging communities through social and behavior change communication using our Tusas Chaba platform as part of ensuring that once we have gone through the plateau, we don't get to a point where uh, you know we, we regress and we have uh, uh, challenges that other countries uh, are, are, are facing. But uh, the social capital, the money that we have as civil society is our ability to get into the networks that we have, influence people in order for them to uh, uh, comply. Next slide, please. So what are the key lessons that we, we learned? One, uh, planning uh, is important. Uh, however, the plan is not able to be executed without uh, resources. To this end, as I've outlined, we did the best we could uh, with uh, the resources that we, we had to be able to achieve. Uh, part of it was also asking of people to, uh, we basically subsidized uh, government in the response. Whilst we know that others received huge amounts of money that were meant for the response in terms of PP and that money did not come to us. We know that there were Cuban doctors that came, were given resources, many other interventions, but one intervention that was deprioritized and did not receive resources, whether led by the uh, community constituency front or other actors in civil society, was civil society not being given the resources that it need, needed in order to uh, meaningfully contribute. But uh, as I said, without resources, we were still able to move forward. Secondly, it's bringing different organizations uh, together, and this has had its uh, challenges because 
uh, bringing and managing expectations and ensuring that you align uh, the thinking to gel to the best of our ability through the strategy that we develop and the operational plan that we have. We had uh, one line of march. In some instances, uh, some of us and others among us were, you know, moving out of sync. But every time we found a, 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 a platform to uh, uh, look at what it is that we wanted to achieve, uh, to get back on course and do the things that we needed to achieve. At the heart of the challenges was uh, our inability to have uh, resources and meet the various uh, expectations. Uh, civil society is also not uh, always homogenous. Uh, interests sometimes erase the common uh, vision, uh, but to the best of our ability, you know, being able to bring 11 different organizations, 11 different leadership uh, to move in tandem was a great success uh, as far as we are concerned. Access to resources has been, uh, what is going on? Uh, access to resources uh, has been a challenge, but uh, what we uh, uh, put for ourselves is that without the resources, we stepped up and did the best that we could, and we are proud of what we have been able to do. And lastly, uh, managing the partnership through an institution. Uh, and uh, you know, that was to ensure that the CCF uh, is uh, registered, we are registered with the CIPC as a not for profit uh, organization. We also have a constitution that defines and guides what all these 11 organizations have uh, committed uh, to do. And we are proud that uh, after long discussions and debates by the government's uh, council, uh, we were able to find one another in terms of what we need to do. Uh, my last slide before we start talking to each other. Next and last slide. So what is our vision going forward? One is uh, to ensure that the institutionalization that we have started uh, continues and we make the front operational uh, to continue to ensure that civil society is a meaningful actor in the health response. We have seen that this health challenge brought with it uh, political, social uh, uh, challenges that uh, we had not uh, anticipated. And it will be with us for many years uh, going forward. Uh, it has reorganized, it has disturbed uh, what we knew life to be. And we need to uh, be in a, a, a work in a way that ensures that going forward, we are able to use the lessons that uh, we have learned. Uh, we will use this platform to mobilize civil society to be better organized, uh, leading to the social sector summit uh, that was supposed to take place in 2018 has been postponed and uh, it was supposed to happen during the uh, COVID period. So uh, bringing together the community constituency front has ensured that Netlake Community Trust, uh, through the participating organization, is able to bring other organizations that were not part and parcel of uh, the, the, the voice of Netlake, and that ensures that uh, we will be ready, better organized, and uh, find each other as we prepare for the social sector uh, summit. And lastly, uh, to ensure that in future, when challenges like COVID strike, we have a platform ready to respond in the form of the community constituency plan. Because in March, we were forced to bring 11 organizations that some of them had strategic linkages but had never worked together under one roof, uh, you know, in terms of one common uh, vision. So colleagues, we stepped up, we did the best we could, and to the best of our ability, we have been able not to be bystanders when the country was confronted with the COVID, we will be counted amongst those who uh, raised their hands and said uh, we don't want uh, you know, our country to experience some uh, of the challenges that other countries who were underprepared, ill prepared for COVID to have gone through. Thank you, uh, colleagues. Uh, thank you very much for that, um, Mabilani. A really interesting overview of the the front and how you've got to where you've gotten um, today. It was interesting to know, um, for example, and I guess really an affirmation of the resource mobilization struggles that have faced civil society across the board, especially during this pandemic, where historically we've struggled for resources and COVID in many ways just exacerbated um, that problem. I agree with you in terms of, it says, 
it says something about the leadership of the community constituency COVID-19 front that you are able to bring that this vast range of players who perhaps don't share the same strategic um, vision or mission. But I think as we've seen across the sector, COVID has provided us with this opportunity almost to force ourselves to um, engage partners that perhaps we wouldn't have thought of engaging otherwise. Um, and of course, congratulations on the registration. Um, I think it's important to have these kind of structures. And as you pointed out, you know, COVID is not going to be the first, it's not the first, it won't be the last pandemic. And so I think quite a few of us are excited to see what this could potentially mean um, in terms of setting up structures like this for pandemics that will undoubtedly come um, going forward. One question that I wanted you to speak to, if you would, was government's response. We've seen statements come out of um, Civil Society Forum um, around a call for resourcing the work that you do. And the work that you do, I think undoubtedly, there's common agreement that ensuring access to food, ensuring access to treatment, ensuring access to, to social services is important. Can you speak to the response you've gotten from government in terms of meeting you where your budget deficit lies? What are they saying? How far are you? Do you have hope that your resource needs will be met while COVID is still hitting us hard? Uh, well, we were, we were in the final stages uh, in May uh, of uh, receiving or our request for resources from the Department of Health, having engaged with the minister, they were being attended. At the time, we were told that uh, our requests, uh, which we had to revise, remember I said we had a budget of a billion. We sent a budget of 400 million to the department, and we had to revise it to about 67 million. Um, we're still waiting for the minister to come back, and it's uh, October now. Uh, government bureaucracy, uh, government people, uh, that you know, it has not resulted in what we had uh, emphasized. The Department of Social Development, as well, we are engaging with them in terms of them coming to the party. We are still waiting. Uh, people are talking about us without us uh, regarding the resources that they will require. But there is also this trend of civil society, and sometimes it's also civil society actors uh, instead of supporting each other and one another. Uh, people, uh, you know, cast aspersions on the intent of what we uh, wanted. Our intent was one. There was COVID, which we were all never ready for. It had, uh, you know, uh, 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 no one had budgeted to respond to COVID. And those resources needed to come uh, from somewhere. If it's correct that the government put the resources together to respond to COVID, including the resources that were made available for PPEs and other things, it's also correct that uh, there should be resources provided for civil society to play a different role to that uh, of, government, uh, of government. But uh, we also saw the issues around corruption regarding PPE, which had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the community constituency front or the broader civil society. And uh, those uh, issues were also painted as uh, uh, you know, issues that uh, resulted in uh, resources that we were expecting for an legitimate cost, not to be uh, uh, you know, on the table. Um, so yeah, the 300,000, 100,000 was a, a, a contribution from a civil society organization. We donated 100,000 towards our cost. And then the 200,000, 225,000 was uh, contributions of the four anchor organizations that have received the funding to implement the uh, food parcel program. Uh, the front asked them that 20% of the resources that they receive to implement the project should be contributed to what's in the front. So the 300,000 was actually civil society contributed itself. We have received zero from a uh, government, but we had asked and uh, uh, instead of being given straight answers, uh, we have been taken from pillar to post and there hasn't been any firm, any commitment. I don't even want to identify and say firm. There hasn't been any uh, commitment to support the work of a, a civil society across the board, not just that which we did as a community constituency fund, but many other actors in civil society who stepped up and contributed. 
Thank you for that, um, Mabelani. Colleagues, I'm cognizant of time. Um, I see there's quite a few questions in the chat around who are the partners, et cetera, et cetera. I would encourage you to go to the France website, which is communityconstituency.org.za. Um, all of their partners and their profiles are listed up there, um, as well as some program updates. Um, I want to get back to the questions in the chat. Mabilani, I think a common theme on the questions in the chat are questions around the payment of service providers. Um, I know you've touched on it. Could you just maybe speak a little bit more in terms of timeframes? What is the leadership's hopes and aspirations in terms of being able to meet some of these individual um, costs that have been incurred doing the important work of the front? Sorry, uh, I was reading the chat, so I just missed the part. That the last part. Um, no, I was saying, could you give um, some overall commentary in terms of what is your expectation from that resource mobilization process in terms of meeting some of the um, front's commitment of expenses being incurred since you set up? That, that's a common thread in some of the comments. Um, so if you could just speak well, a little bit. It's to keep knocking on doors. Is uh, we have discussed and agreed that we need to create uh, innovative ways in which we must mobilize resources, including uh, using uh, you know crowdfunding platforms, uh, appealing to South Africans uh, to uh, contribute. We also know in terms of fundraising, people are most unlikely to give you money to pay for things that they were not part of when those particular things were actually done. But COVID, uh, you know, affects us continuously affect all of us. So it's to use our collective uh, might, collective, uh, uh, you know, resources to be able to appeal to people that see and have seen value in what we have done to help us uh, cover the costs that they were legitimately, uh, you know, uh, encountered as part of uh, our response to uh, the, the, the COVID, uh, COVID front. So we also said we will partner with other organizations uh, in terms of being, uh, you know, providing services. Uh, from time to time, we have calls for people to provide technical expertise and that uh, people earn uh, resources through their contribution. So we'll use those particular mechanisms to support uh, the work that, uh, uh, you know, we have done. We can't cry over spilled milk. We have uh, stepped up, asked, we have put together proposals that are posted, we have been engaged and we await uh, responses. Until those responses come, we have to do the best we can with what we have, where we are. Great, thank you for that. Uh, Mabrani, can you speak to this a specific comment in the chat around reporting? Um, when, and if it has happened, um, Please just update us. So when would civil society in general um, be able to expect a report in terms of the activities of the front so far, um, your reach, your impact, et cetera, et cetera? Because on another level, I imagine that that would also be key and essential in resource mobilization. As you were talking around your various interventions, but think about the value, and I guess even the commercial value of the data that you are generating. So are the opportunities there to mobilize resources, um, to meet the needs of the front. But the more pointed question asked by Abraham Nguni is around, will there be a, a, a report um, either at the end of the period? I imagine immediately today, you're not thinking about the end because COVID is still very much with us. When can civil society expect a report on the progress um, of the work of the front? Okay. In our plan, we had uh, put together a, a six month uh, period in the end of October uh, where we will, will get to the beginning of the end. Uh, you know, I mean, the end of the beginning. Um, so at the end of October, we will do a consolidated report in terms of all the work that we have done, uh, and uh, we will publicly share that particular information uh, 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 report where we have been able to achieve great milestones, we will celebrate them. Where we have learned lessons, and some of them are already shared here, we will put them out there so that uh, we can chisel uh, that which we have done uh, uh, going to the future so that uh, we are better prepared uh, and we are better organized uh, in terms of what we do. So we are a public institution. Nothing that we do is kept in, uh, you know, uh, under lock and key we will uh, share that report uh, that we will compile 
uh, at the end of October when the NEF center mandate comes to an end and uh, we reposition uh, the front uh, going forward from November uh, based on the decisions that the governance council uh, will be making in terms of uh, proposals that the uh, management is working on. Great, thank you for that. Um, as we reach the top of the hour, Mabilani, can you reflect a bit on the front's experience and interaction with the research? These calls for those of you who might be joining us for the first time are really have been set up and are really established for the purpose of bridging the gap between scientific research and civil society. And yeah. so what, what has your experience been engaging with the research and scientific sectors so far as the front in addition to these calls that we host every week? The first point I want to make, and I want to thank you, Tian and Tantra, uh, I mean, and Tando Yola, that when we reached out to you uh, in uh, uh, July, that uh, part of the response to COVID it also includes uh, various trials that are taking place. Uh, you uh, joined hands with us as people that are uh, working in this particular area. You gave shape to what you wanted to see being achieved. You have driven it week in and week out in terms of engaging with various uh, 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 experts in uh, working, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in research. Uh, what were you doing? You were conscientizing us as civil society leaders and actors in understanding the value that we have, the values that communities uh, are required to bring to uh, research so that we better understand, we are able to engage with those that are leading research so that uh, the you know, research that is being undertaken takes into account the needs of the communities that are participants in those things, but also pushing uh, another angle of ensuring that the resources don't just go to those that are already resourced, but they go to communities as well as community actors in order to contribute uh, towards, uh, you know, solutions that uh, we would like to see. So this platform, you uh, agreed with us, we should continue to lead this an important platform, and we encourage colleagues and uh, friends of your colleagues to come to these platforms every Thursday. Uh, there's been great lessons learned. There are things that we didn't know that we now know, and we are inter integrating and incorporating those things into the work that we do as uh, we shape, uh, you know, our steps uh, in engaging with the uh, researchers uh, in terms of uh, the various uh, solutions. The WHO has created uh, uh, the uh, ACT platform, and uh, some civil society uh, actors are already in that platform to ensure that solutions that uh, come are not just to benefit the private sector and the pharmaceuticals. They are a people-centered uh, response, and we need to be counted in shaping what needs to happen. So we are grateful that uh, you have taken uh, the lead. You have uh, taken this bull by the eight horns. Again, unresourced, unfunded. Uh, but if we want things to be done, only when funding is there, nothing gets done. And uh, we are very grateful for your leadership and those that have participated and have learned like myself. Thank you for um, Mabilani. I think certainly our experience working with um, the front has been an interesting and a beneficial one. Um, I just want to recognize that there are several comments on the chat. Um, and as usual, we commit to getting your answers in writing um, to all of these questions. Um, as I had stated at the outset of the call, the African Alliance will be launching its online uh, presence during the month of October. So when you go to that resource, you will be able to find all of the webinar recordings, all of the Q&A transcripts. So if you've ever asked a question on any one of these webinars that you felt were not answered, you should go there. You will see um, the answers to your various questions in writing. I want to recognize that there are important issues that have been raised on the chat, um, specifically around engagement of the front, um, levels of responses to emails and communications. There's been issues raised by service providers regarding payments, requesting clear timeframes, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to recognize that colleagues, um, but also in terms of time as we have five minutes too. Um, I just want to ask you Mabilani, so at the end of the day, what excites you, what inspires you? Has there been a particular district, a particular province, a particular movement? that has really, in your mind, made an impact that we can all learn from? And what is your hope going forward as Mabelane? 
Well, I mean, for me, uh, one is uh, being able to navigate the contradictions that come with operating in the civil society space. We know that the resources, uh, you know, they are a presence or absence can either build or break us. And we've been able to do what we can with what we have where we are, uh, uh, with resources not being there. But in terms of uh, the district, there's no particular one. I mean, uh, colleagues have gone out of their way in the different uh, taken place uh, in terms of contributing. Uh, colleagues have fought their way into uh, platforms that were created at these levels to say we are civil society voices. We need to be in the, in the party. They were told this stuff for mayors. This is for DGs, this is for directors, and they said, hey, as we are president of uh, the, the, the platform, but uh, say nice unit uh, is very important. The issues that colleagues have raised also around, uh, you know, uh, service providers were, uh, you know, grateful that people don't eat moving forward. They also require to be paid. We are attending those particular issues, we are doing the best can to ensure that uh, we meet, uh, you know, the obligations that uh, we have uh, made to uh, people. And uh, we're not going to run away. We are here. Those are our problems. Uh, those are our challenges. Uh, and uh, together, we'll be able to do what we can. So only the thing I can say is that uh, we need to step up the leader that we have. So we are citizens of this country. And uh, when God applauds, Thank you, Mabilani. Um, colleagues, Mabilani Fundisi is the co-convener of the Community Constituency COVID-19 Front as a deployee of the South African National AIDS Council Civil Society Forum. Um, Mabilani, thank you again on behalf of the collective for making time to speak to us. As indicated, we will reach out to yourself and your team to get some additional answers to the questions we've been unable to get to during the call. Thank you for your time. Thank you, colleagues. We look forward to speaking to you Thursday at the same time. Um, we will be profiling the section of four partners on the call. So thank you, everybody, and have a good Thursday. Thank you, Siabong.